Okay, so the topic for today is about solution stoichiometry, specifically something called molarity. We measured a concentration of, it's a way we measured a concentration of a solution, uh, which is the amount of solute present for a given quantity of solvent or solution. Uh, concentration is how much stuff you have dissolved in given amount of water. Say, for instance, um, I just actually had some coffee a few minutes ago. And a coffee was, uh, if it's sometimes a little bit too strong, we say that thing is very concentrated. Uh, and if it's very light, well, we say it's not so concentrated. Same with tea. You can have dark tea, you know, something that you seat a tea bag for a very long time. Then you could say you have a very concentrated tea. Or you could have one tea bag for a gallon of water. And then you would have, you could say, a very not concentrated tea because that's not a lot of tea. One tea bag for a gallon of water is not very much. Um, it just kind of like tastes... Well, anyway, it doesn't taste right for, to me if that's how you made tea. Uh, so the concentration is how much solute, how much stuff you're dissolving for a given quantity of solvent. In this chapter, again, we're doing aqueous solution, so we're talking about water, something dissolved in water. But concentration doesn't have to be just in water, but we were uh, specifically talking about water in this chapter on aqueous solution. So the measurement of concentration is a one measurement is something called molarity. This is actually a very common one or one of the big ones. Another one's called molality, which we'll talk about later. But the biggest one is called molarity. The symbol for molarity is capital M, capital M for molarity. Molarity is defined as the moles of solute, whatever it is that you're dissolving, your solute, divided by liters of solution. So moles of solute, solute is also the quantity in smaller amounts. Divide by the total volume, the total liters of the stuff in solution. So that is defined as molarity, also written as capital M. So um, at the end, the units of molarity are moles per liter or just molars. Sometimes people actually just write that. If I have something that is five molars, I'm just write that. Sometimes people write five capital M for molars, that's a capital M. Five molars of sodium chloride salt. Okay, that means five moles per liter. That is the same as five moles per liter. Okay, they mean the same thing. Five capital M molars. In fact, that's the term we call it molars for molarity. So five molars or five moles per liter, they mean the same thing. Okay, so. Um, Let's look at a sample question. What is the mass of potassium oxide is required to make 500 milliliters of a 2.8 molar solution? So again, this is the same as 2.8 moles per liter. It can be written either way. You can write it as 2.8 capital M, just like that, or 2.8 moles per liter of, oh, they also have to say of what? Of, in this case, potassium oxide. Um, just like if you said 2.8 grams, like 2.8 grams of what? Okay, technically you should say. I, this is just an example. Five molars of something is the same as five molar, moles per liter of something. Okay, so from this, I know the question is, what's the mass? I know the volume, kind of. That's 500 milliliters. I'm going to just change that to liters now. That is the same as 0. 0.5 liters. Okay. That's 0.5 liters. Uh, the mass of, so what's the mass of potassium iodide required to make half a liter of a 0.28 mole, molar solution? Well, if I know the volume, I can change the volume to number of moles and then moles to grams. That's in general what I'm going to do. Why? Because I know there are 2.8 moles if I had a liter of the solution. 2.8 molars means there's 2.8 moles per liter. 2.8 moles per liter of solution. How much solution I have? I was given uh, 0.5 liters. And so I'm going to change volume into moles using the molarity. And how to go from moles to grams again? Moles to grams, that's the chapter in stoichiometry. This is called solution stoichiometry. Moles to grams by multiplying by the molar mass. This funny looking M, that's the molar mass of potassium iodide. And we find molar mass from the periodic table, of course. 
adding potassium. I think uh, potassium was potassium. I think 39.1 and iodine. Actually, I don't remember what iodine is off the top of my head. Plus iodine off the periodic table. Okay, so 500 milliliters, which uh, just change it to liters. Uh, this is the step. I didn't do that here, but uh, I just changed it here. So fine, half a liter. Then I change mole uh, volume liters into moles because I know there are 2.8 moles of potassium iodide per liter. 2.8 moles per liter. Then I change moles of grams by multiplying by the molar mass. This 166 comes from adding potassium and iodine on a periodic table. From that, I get 232 grams of potassium iodine. Milliliters cancels out. Liters of solution cancel out. Moles cancel out. Moles of potassium iodide. And all you have left is grams of potassium iodide. So uh, I'll do some other uh, some other molarity stoichiometry problems in a few. But this just is just one example of uh, using molarity to do a problem. Okay, so the mass required to make 500 milliliters of a 2.8 molar solution of potassium iodide, I need 232 grams of potassium iodide. So if you were actually trying to make 500 milliliters of potassium iodide, that's 2.8 molars, you would take 232 grams of potassium iodide, stir it up in some water, and fill up that container until you get 500 milliliters. What I mean by that? Take 232 grams of the stuff, that's assuming you weighed it out on the scale already. Take 232 grams of that stuff. Add some water in. Okay. Stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. And add water until, assuming this is the 500 milliliter mark, until you get to 500 milliliter. If you did that, you would have 2.8 molar solution. 500 milliliters of a 2.8 molar solution. That's how you would make that solution. Okay, let's just say now you made the solution and you found out, oh wait, that concentration is way too high. Even though that was the original question, how do you make it? But I actually want to now, this thing is con too concentrated. Well, uh, what can you do if you have a very concentrated solution and it's just uh, too high of a concentration? You can go through a process called dilution. A process of a procedure for preparing a less concentrated solution for a more from a more concentrated solution. So again, so if my uh, coffee is too strong, I have an espresso. I didn't mean to get that. It's too strong. That's just way too concentrated for me. What can you do? You can add water. You can americano. That's what it is. Just add water until you get to a less concentrated solution. So um, dilution involves adding solvent. Our solvent in this chapter is water. Okay, if it's coffee, if espresso is too strong, add some water to dilute it. Tea is too strong, add some water. Okay, dilute the thing if it's too concentrated. Uh, so the soup is too thick, add some water to dilute it. Okay, the solvent. In this chapter, aqueous solution is always going to be water. But one thing that we know for sure, the number of moles of whatever it is that's in here wouldn't change. The number of moles of solute before dilution should equal the number of moles of solute after dilution. Yes, there's more water, but the number of moles don't change. And I'm going to write down the equation for molarity again. Molarity is equal to equal to number of moles of solute divided by liters of solution. Well, if molarity is equal to moles of solute divided by liters of solution, then the number of moles will equal to the molarity times the liters of solution. It's like density equals mass over volume, right? Mass must equal to density times volume. Well, the same thing here. Molarity is equal to moles over liters, so moles is equal to molarity times liters. So the liters, the units for this, for liters, is going to be the volume. So we also write this thing as, what is the, molar, or the number of moles of solute before? It's going to be the molarity times its volume initially. 
Here, the moles of solute after the elution will be the molarity times the volume at the end, rewritten sometimes like this. Molarity times the initial molar uh, the, the initial molarity times the initial volume equals the final molarity times the final volume. This is what the textbook uses, MIVI equals MFVF. Sometimes some books would put M1V1 equals M2V2. Or M, uh, C, M, C, sorry, my phone. M, C, V, C equals uh, M, D, V, D for concentrated and dilute. And so uh, it's, it depends on the textbook. Uh, and so, hold on. Okay, so uh, let's use this equation. MIVI equals MFVF in this problem. How would you prepare 60 milliliters of a 0.2 molar HNO3 uh, from a stock solution? Oh, that's called nitric acid, just so you know. From a stock solution, that's four molars HNO3 nitric acid. What it's saying is, hey, you have, what is a stock solution? Let's start with that term. A stock solution is like you're given. You have a bottle, you're just assuming unlimited supply. You have an unlimited supply of this 4 molar nitric acid solution, also known as your stock solution. You don't want 4 molars, you only want 0.2 molars. How would you make 60 milliliters, that's 0.2 molars? Well, obviously, don't take a container and fill up to 60 milliliters, because your original thing was 4 molars. You don't want 4 molars. I know I want to dilute this stuff. I want to take this 4 molar acid, Add water until I have 60 milliliters total and a concentration is 0.2 molars. So there's a few things I know. I know my, uh, I'm going to use this equation, first of all, MIVI equals MFVF. The initial molarity times initial volume equals the final molarity times the final volume. I know the initial molarity. It's four. I'm leaving out the units just for nice number's sake. It's four. I don't know how much of the original volume I need. That's what I'm trying to find. I know the final molarity, it's 0.2 right here. That was the uh, final uh, molarity. I also know the final volume, 0 0.06. Okay, uh, it says here 60 milliliters, but milliliters, the volume technically should be liters or 0 0.06 liters, divide by 1,000. So I know MI, I know MF, I know VF. I know MI, I know MF, I know VF. I can solve for the one unknown VF. Okay, my face is on top of it. I can solve for the one unknown V, sorry, VI, not VF. VF, I do know. So algebraically, VI is equal to MF, VF over MI, right? Divide both sides by MI. Oh, let me just plug everything in. Plug that, type that in a calculator. I get 0 0.003, the units are liters, or three milliliters. So what does that mean? That means to prepare, I'm trying to make something that's 60 milliliters that has a molarity of 0.2 molars. Given original concentration, that's four molars. That's also known as my stock solution. I need three milliliters of this four molar acid. Three milliliters of, I'm just write that, the four molar acid that was given. Well, that doesn't make 60 milliliters total. Well, how do I dilute to 60 milliliters? We add water. How much water will I add to get 60 milliliters? If I have three milliliters of a four molar acid, well, 57. Because three plus 57 is 60 milliliters total. And if you did took four milliliters of my full molar, mo four molar stock solution and add 57 milliliters of water, I have 60 milliliters total. What will the final molarity of that stock solution be? 0.2 molars. So that is dilutions.